Hey everyone, Dave here, and today I am obsessing over this one particular thought, so I am making a passionate plea to CBS. I know who should be the next host of The Late Late Show. Dave's obsession! Dave's obsession of the homo! So, for just a little bit of context, the last late night talk show that I really, really loved was Craig Ferguson's version of The Late Late Show. It's on stay up, it's been a long, long day, and you got the Sandman at the door. Craig was playful and goofy and always pushing for absurdism whenever possible. He did sketches and impressions and characters, and he interviewed guests, did monologues, all the things you're supposed to do but he always put his own unique spin on it. He used the traditional trappings of Late Night as a framework to do whatever the hell he wanted, and it felt like he was getting away with something. Every episode was like a party hosted by your weirdest, funniest friend, making Late Night fun while still fitting into the Late Night box. Yep, it's another edition of We Don't Give a Crap Television, coming your way. <laughs> when he left, he was replaced by James Corden, a man I have no particular feelings about no matter how hard I try. I know there are plenty of people who like him, and there are no shortage of people who despise him, and I just can't muster up a feeling. I gave his version a try, and it was... fine? Corden surrounded himself with some truly talented people, both on stage and behind the scenes, and he certainly steered into the playfulness of his predecessor, but he didn't quite go for that absurdism that made the playfulness pop. His show always felt like watching rich and famous people play games. Which can be a lot of fun if you like those rich and famous people, but nothing about the show's own identity or Corden's identity as a host really drew me in. So now Corden has announced that he is leaving The Late Late Show, and with the caveat that it would be really nice to give this slot to someone who isn't a cishet white man, this is network television and they're gonna do what they're gonna do. So if we're giving The Late Late Show to another white dude, I think there's only one choice. My name is Paul F. Tompkins, and I do Paul F. Tompkins-based comedy. <laughs> if you're not familiar with me, I don't blame you. I'm just getting to know myself. Here's what's gonna happen. It's Paul F. Tompkins time. 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 The Late Late Show with Paul F. Tompkins? Now I know what you're asking. What is this, a crossover episode? Paul F. Tompkins is the funniest man alive, period. The man deserves to be on television more no matter what type of show he's on, but I think he would be especially well-suited to a late night talk show because, well, he's great at pretty much everything the job requires. Ostensibly, the number one job of a talk show host is interviewing celebrities, and PFT has proven to be an expert at that. I mean, have you seen Speakeasy? Welcome once again to Speakeasy. I am still Paul F. Tompkins. And our guest today, you're gonna lose your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, mostly ladies, if we're honest, Mr. Nathan Fillion. Nathan, hello. On the YouTube series Speakeasy, Paul interviewed a number of celebrities over drinks. Some of the celebrities were friends and colleagues of his, and some of them were people he accidentally created beef with, but they managed to bury the hatchet. I made weird! <laughs> the chats were insightful, going deeper than the traditional celebrity interview, and they often reached heartwarming places, but they were still funny throughout, thanks to Paul's quick wit and his instant repartee and chemistry with every celebrity he talked to. So I've been desperately trying to find stability. I've been trying to get on a TV show forever. I do pilot season every year. I always try to get on a TV show. And um, this year, again, doing pilot season, I read this script that I loved so much, but it shot in New York. Mm -hmm. But it was the first time that I was like, I can't. Was that scary? Yes. Yeah. It was super scary. Because job's job. And then I didn't get a pilot. But still, I was like, wow, I'm doing this. I'm saying no. Mm -hmm. I'm putting myself first. How long did it take before that felt good? It doesn't. It didn't. I guess when I got the, the next doesn't. pilot. <laughs> so there is a part of me uh, that keeps going. And there is a part of me that gets anxious that I have to keep going because uh, I worked so hard for no money for so, so long, and now I'm able to support myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there's always that fear in the back of my head that if I stop, 
um, then maybe who knows what'll happen. It'll all go away. Right. Yeah. I got here by not stopping. Yeah. And so like there is somebody's going to come in and say, you're not allowed to stop. No, no, no. It was just like a yeah. day. <laughs> no. I just went swimming for no a day. No stopping. Uh, and it's going to be Read you who sign. does it. It'll be me. Yeah. yeah you'll come That's in. That's why there. I wear these suits. We don't explore a lot ourselves, scenes about ourselves. Mm -hmm. That may be a direction we want to explore more this season. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. <laughs> Mustache. Do you see this? I see it. The mustache. It's happening no right one, now. He never, no one's ever talked about this, but. No, is this the first that's being acknowledged? He likes it. It looks nice. Yeah. I have well, two look, Maybe I'm biased. You're, the, you're biased. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I grew up watching Sesame Street. I'm, no. I'm a Gordon fan. <laughs> I, <laughs> Who is it, right? Who is it? Nobody's <laughs> not a Gordon fan. Gordon's very affable. What's up? What's up? What's up, big man? <laughs> He's an officer and a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, maybe you're not convinced because Speakeasy was edited and you're not sure he'd be as good at off-the-cuff interviews. To which I say, have you heard Spontanea Nation? Spontanea Nation was a podcast PFT hosted from 2015 to 2019. I've talked about it before. You remember a uh, fantastic long form improv, you know, Savannah, Georgia. In Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> Here we are again, Savannah, Georgia. To not, <laughs> none of us ghosts. But before the improv began, every episode had an interview with a celebrity guest, and those interviews would range from hilarious to heart wrenching. Paul had a knack for really getting personal with guests, and it would be a great asset to late night. I believe I was afraid to learn how to tell time. Hey, hey, <laughs> no, no. This is a, uh, an admission that this man is making. We're not gonna laugh at his childhood self. Child, childhood, right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> okay, but interviewing is only part of the equation. How does he do at monologues? Are you seriously asking that question? No, you're not, because you're just a straw man I concocted to set up each point, but yes, he can do monologues. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been a stand-up comedian since I was 17 years old, 17, I was a child, a child going to work in comedy clubs. It was downright Dickensian. <laughs> there I was just out of high school and my tattered cap and my sooty face and I went to a <laughs> comedy club. Please sir, may I tell some jokes? Not only is Paul a legendary stand-up, he can improvise monologues. On the aforementioned Spontanea Nation and his earlier Pod F Tomcast, Paul would start each show with a gently spoken yet hilarious soliloquy off the top of his head. The podcast started. Which podcast, you ask? That is a strange question for you. Because you downloaded this and you're listening to it. You chose to do this. I'm assuming. Look, I don't know what kind of freaky thing you got going on. Some role play that went south. Okay, but these days we turn to our late night host for political takes. Can PFT provide those? Have you forgotten he's already hosted a political satire show? No You Shut Up on Fusion featured PFT moderating political debates with Henson alternative puppets. The same puppets you see at Puppet Up if you happen to be in LA or at Not Scary Farm. The show was mostly a parody of political television, taking pundit panel shows and turning them into an absurd puppet panel show, but there were still genuine sharp political jokes among the nonsense. Have you been vaccinated? Of course I'm vaccinated, I'm not an idiot! I just think idiots should be allowed to die from idiot diseases if they want to. If people don't want to learn from history, that's their prerogative! So yes, Paul has done political comedy on television before. I'm just asking for him to be offered the same chance without being upstaged by puppets. I mean, nothing against puppets, of course. I won't complain if puppets still make their way onto his version of The Late Late Show. But I'd like to see him host a show as himself. A show built around his full comedic persona and not just this pundit moderator persona version of himself. I'd like a late night show that gives Paul a chance to show his full range. And also that doesn't get cancelled unceremoniously without warning. But can he do sketches? The man was on Mr. Show! Yeah, 
You know, Mr. Show, legendary HBO sketch comedy series. It starred Saul Goodman and Tobias Funke and SpongeBob SquarePants, and as far as we know, only one cast member who stormed the Capitol. PFT was on it as well. I think he has sketch comedy cred. On top of which, Paul has his own regular live variety show, Variatopia. And if you're ever in LA to see the show, or if you just buy the recordings off of Paul's Vimeo page, you know that this show has everything he could need for a talk show. Monologue, interviews, musical guests, and yes, sketches, with Paul playing both wacky characters and the straight man, depending on the sketch. The man is giving us everything we could want from a late night show, and he's putting it all together himself. Okay, so Paul F. Tompkins is good at literally everything required to host a late night talk show. But is he famous enough to host a late night talk show? First off, yes. Second off, does it matter? Conan O'Brien wasn't exactly a household name when he started, but his legacy has been cemented so much that he's moved on to taking over podcasting, a medium that PFT has already conquered. Hi, my name is Paul F. Tompkins. And I feel cautiously optimistic about being Conan O'Brien's friend. Good Lord, we've been messing around uh, with, I think this is called a podcast. We don't know what this is. It's really, probably doesn't earn the title, but you've mastered this form uh, such a long time ago. Third off, Paul F. Tompkins already had his own network late night talk show 10 years ago in the fictional world of the CTV slash CW drama, The LA Complex. What's he doing here? Well, what are you doing here? What am I? It's my show, The Paul F. Tompkins Show. You don't even know what job you're interviewing for? All he said was a talk show. Do we really want the real world to be worse than the world of a Canadian-American television drama? But the bottom line is, I think Paul has a better chance than just about anyone of bringing the same kind of spark to late night that Craig Ferguson brought once before. Because just like Craig, Paul not only excels at everything I've mentioned, but he puts his own fresh creative spin on all of it. It's kind of his thing. So much of PFT's career is based on blending the aesthetics of classic showbiz with a modern quick wit and progressive viewpoint, taking the trappings of the entertainment he grew up with and doing whatever he wants with it. The exact thing late night needs. Paul F. Tompkins is the funniest man alive, and he's a master of literally every skill set required to host a late night talk show. The only reason not to give him the slot is if he doesn't want it. Which, to be fair, maybe he doesn't. I haven't asked him about it. But until he says, I don't want to host the Late Late Show, you should at least offer it to him. Anyway, I guess the target audience of this video is, um, CBS executives. So, uh, if you are not a CBS executive, um, I guess disregard, but uh, if you know any CBS executives, please forward this video to them. Uh, and if you like this video, you might like other videos in the Obsession of the Moment series where I babble passionately about other dumb things that matter to me. And you might like other videos where I talk specifically about podcasts I like. Not all of said podcasts feature PFT, but you know, most of them do. And until next time, this is Dave signing off. Peace with God.